I want to talk to you guys about love and respect in marriage. Guys, love and respect is one of the key components in helping you to build a successful marriage and relationship. As a matter of fact, your marriage won't last without it. If you're not loving your wife and you're not respecting your husband, it won't work. As a matter of fact, in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22, the word of God declared to the wife, Wives, submit yourself to your husband as unto the Lord. In other words, if you are not able to submit to God who you can't see, then you're definitely going to have a problem submitting to your husband. One of the things that we need to understand about marriage is that there is a vertical alignment in marriage. You have God, you have the husband, you have the wife, then you have the children. That's the vertical alignment. It's the pecking order. Just as how do you have the same thing in the kingdom of God, where you have God, you have the Son, then you have the church. That is the reason why marriage is such a powerful reflection of God's love for man and Christ's love for the church. When the Bible said to the husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, do you understand how powerful that is? So I want you to hear me out. I want you to listen to this. So God said to the, the wives, submit to your husband. But we live in a culture where most wives don't want to submit. They think that submission is wrong or submission is weakness. The truth be told, submission is not wrong. Submission is not weakness. Submission gives you power. Because the reality is, if you don't submit to your husband, you will never win the heart of that man. I want you to hear me. If you don't submit to your husband, you will never win his heart. Because a man will never love the woman or honor her if she is not in submission to him. So submission is not weakness. And the Bible also tells us that the husband and wife must submit one to another. Guys, remember that marriage is a partnership. Marriage is not about the I factor. Marriage is about us. It's about ours. It's about we. And so it's important, ladies and gentlemen, that you understand that when we talk about submission, we're not talking about submission based on the world system. No, no, no. An anti-male culture is telling you that you don't need to submit. You need to be the boss. The truth be told, there is no boss in a marriage. There's different roles that the husband and the wife play in the marriage, but there is no boss. There's leadership. And leadership leads by example. So when God put the man as the head to lead the wife, when God put the man as the head, it's not about him bossing his wife around. A boss just tells the wife what to do. Oh, I want my food. Go wash my clothes. Go make my dinner. Go and give me sex. That's what a boss wants. He just wants to sit back and just do nothing. But a leader, he leads by example. A leader honor his wife. A leader protect his wife. A leader love and cherish and show intimacy and affection and romance his wife. A leader is very territorial when it comes to his family. That's your position. That's your, your thought process. That's in your DNA as a husband. Any woman will gravitate to a husband that shows that type of posture and that type of attitude towards them. What about love? The Bible said to the husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. It's amazing to me that God did not have to tell the woman to love her husband because love for the woman comes natural. It's embedded in her DNA. She has the instinct, the desire, the passion to love. It's a part of her repertoire. It was built inside of her. Women are nurturer and communicator by nature. And that's why love for a woman comes easy. But notice that God had to tell the man to love your wife. Because love for a man is not necessarily something that he desire every day. In other words, not that he doesn't want love, he wants love, but you don't have to walk around every day and say, honey, I love you. Sweetie pie, I love you. My honey, sweetie boo, and all that kind of good stuff that you say to your husband. He likes to hear that, but that's not what drives him. What drives him is the respect that the wife gives to him, the honor that you give. When you see him doing something great, you edify him. You affirm who he is as a man. Honey, thank you for being such a good father. Thank you for being such a wonderful husband. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for making sure that food and clothes and shelter and all that stuff that the man do for the family. You edify him. You reaffirm something that you know that is true about him. 
That's what gravitates him. That's what drive him. That's what he's passionate about. On the other hand, when a man loves his wife, when you honor her, when you respect her, when you serve her, when you add value to her life, when you protect her vulnerability and you make sure that she feels safe and secure with you, I refuse to believe that if a man is doing this, practicing this, doing this, and I'm talking about you being a husband, a man of God, a godly husband, a godly spouse, a godly man of God, I, I can't see a wife will literally intentionally disrespect you and dishonor you for playing such a wonderful godly role because that's what she desire. That's what every woman is after. A man that will love, honor, and respect her. A man that will serve her and make her feel like a queen. A man that will add value to her life and make her feel happy. That's always what she's after. If you have a wife that is still dishonoring you, even though you're playing this kind of role, man, you marry a knife, man. That's not a wife. That's not a helpmate. She's not helping you to breathe easy in your marriage. I'm, I'm just being real about it. Or there are conflict or issues that is preventing her from applying the very principle that God command the wife to play and perform in the marriage. And so it's important for the husband and wife to understand that marriage is not a competition. You don't compete with each other in the marriage. You complete, you complete each other in the marriage and in the relationship. A wise Christ loving husband will never take advantage of his leadership role as a leader in the marriage. He honors that position. He honors that calling. He honors that assignment. And the same thing for the wife. A wise, Christ-loving, Christ-fearing wife will never take advantage of her position as a wife by way of disrespecting and dishonoring her husband. Talk to me. It's, it just doesn't make sense. It, you become a two-headed monster. Instead of you loving and honoring and synchronizing, syncopating and developing a rhythm in your relationship and in your marriage, you are butting head. Because the, the responsibility is that the male and the female has a role that you play in the marriage and in the relationship. You see, what respect is to a man is very powerful. Respect to a man is like what water is and, and, and sunlight is to a plant. The plant will not survive without it. The man doesn't want respect. He needs respect. Respect translates to love for your husband. The same thing for the wife. Love and respect for your wife is like what water and sunlight is to your garden, to your plant. Your plant will not survive without sunlight and water. Your marriage and your love and your wife cannot survive without love, respect, and honor. And so when both of you guys keep loving each other and respecting each other, the cycle of love and respect is turning and you find that you have a better relationship and a better marriage with each other. Because the more you love your wife is the more respect she gives. The more respect she gives is the more you love. The more love you give is the more respect she gives. The more respect you give is the more love he gives. It's a cycle that you can't stop. And the moment you stop respecting your husband, that's the moment you start to withdraw from the relationship and the marriage. The moment you stop honoring and respecting your wife, that's the moment she stops serving and honoring you in the relationship. So marriage is not about the I factor. Marriage is about the us, the we factor, the our factor. And I believe that if you really truly love your spouse, then you will add value to, your li to their lives. That's your responsibility, to add value to their lives. Your job is to make sure that every day when you show up in the marriage, you're showing up to do better and be better than you were yesterday. I've been married for 25 years, guys, and I'm sitting here telling you that I've learned a lot over those 25 years. Matter of fact, the reality is who I am today as a husband, as a father, as a man of God, it, it's, 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 it's a growing process. It's not something that I arrived at overnight, you know, disrespecting and saying things to my wife that I shouldn't have said. And I can't tell the last time we have an argument. Do we have discussion? Yes. Do we have disagreement? Yes. But we know how to gauge the temperature of our relationship. We know exactly how to modulate between the highs and the low. We know how to gauge who we are and where we are at that particular place and stage in our marriage. And can I tell you the truth? It is a beautiful thing. 
We are happier than we've ever been. We are closer than we've ever been. We're having more fun and loving and caring for each other than we've ever had, than we've ever experienced in our marriage. Why? Because we come to a place in our relationship and in our marriage when we know, we realize that if it's going to be, it's up to us. We've practiced the principles that governs and maintain a successful marriage and relationship. And those principles are godly principles. Coupled with other books that we have read and things that we have done together, workshop that we have taken and all the things that we do to build and maintain a successful marriage. But the key components in really what allow your marriage to be flowing with a certain type of rhythm is to have love and respect as one of the key components and foundation in building and maintaining a successful marriage. And so guys, I just wanted to come on here and just share this information with you. Love and respect is necessary and it's needed. May God continue to bless you all. I pray that you consistently keep working on your marriage, keep building your marriage, keep building yourself. Marriage is not by happenstance. Marriage is a plan event. Marriage is hard work. Marriage is sacrifice. Marriage is commitment. And if you do the work, you'll get the result. As I've often talked about the five P's of life, proper plan and prevent poor performance. You will never be ready for what you did not prepare for. And if you properly prepare and then you proceed, you will yield or you will get the result that you're looking for. May God bless you. Continue to work on yourself. Continue to be the best that you can be. Ain't it great? I will catch you soon on the next video. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel and please like this video, share this with your friends, and I hope and trust that you will be blessed. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.